but you also talked about the social shame. You got to shame them into agreeing. Well, but I think we could start by not rewarding it. I think that's step one. Maybe no money, no OnlyFans. Uh, maybe the guys come in, stop marrying the Kim Kardashian, stop giving these women mm. commitment, neon. You know, men used to like shame other simps. You know, Dylan Dennis is really doing a service to the men and the men throughout this country. But, yeah. you know, it's interesting because mm -hmm. you talk about the free markets and capitalism. I would say the onus is on the men, mm -hmm. the simps, the guys who are paying these women. Because if guys stop paying the OnlyFans and the sex workers yeah. and the strippers, what have you, then they would stop doing it. But there's a major market for that. Do you have so they keep doing it. So at what level does the men have accountability do you have the same, for rewarding these women? Do you have the women? same energy for drug dealers? Do I have the same energy for yeah, drug dealers? Yeah, so if dealers? a guy deals <laughs> drugs, is it the crack addict's fault? Or is well, it the drug dealer's fault? I think addiction is a lot different. Why do we for have, being addicted to drugs than being like, yeah, I just want to see some why ass. Do, why do we have, why, no, why do we have empathy for drug addiction but not sex addiction, addiction? You know, there are studies that say that sex is a need for men. So when you have one out Obviously. of three men that are either virgins or haven't had sex in the past year, it's like, it's on the internet. They're going to go somewhere. Now, I, I don't believe in porn. If this was Pearl's world, I would just ban it all. I would yeah. just be like, that's banned, that's banned. But it's in Well, I mean, actually, you could use the same argument for pimps then. Like, okay. Pimps aren't at fault because the women need help. They need management. I mean, <laughs> no, but of course, that's not going to apply. Of course, you're going to put the onus on the pimp. Like, hey, bro, what you're doing is immoral. It's kind of like you think about it. A lot of people went after Andrew Tate. He wasn't even a, like a legitimate pimp. He was just running a webcam business. And of course, they were throwing the stones at him because, yeah, it, it is on him. People are accountable. People should be accountable, but they're not. Men are held accountable. Typically, women aren't. They use men as scapegoats. And men like Adam allow this to continue. Now, here's the thing. I'm a very accountable person. I do agree to some degree that, yeah, men should stop buying women's OnlyFans. If you're that curious, I'm sure there's some subreddit out there that you can find it. But realistically, it's the person doing it that is held accountable. So if a girl wants to go on OnlyFans... She should be held accountable for that decision. If women want to sell their bodies online, <laughs> it's not all of a sudden the man's fault. Just like if there's a pimp out there and he wants to start managing streetwalkers, it's not the streetwalker's fault. It's the pimp. He chose to do that. Or, all right, say this. Say we have companies. Say the wage gap was real. Let's, let's say that was a real thing and women were being paid less. Well, then we could put the onus on the women who are applying. Well, the wage gap is okay and it's justified because these women are accepting these job positions. It's not the employer's fault that they're paying them less. It's the women's fault for taking the job and leaving that market open for the employers. It's not the employer's fault. It's the people accepting the job's fault and creating a market that is profitable and open for the employers. But the wage gap isn't real. And they aren't paying women less. But it was just an analogy. But I do find it funny how it's just we always are looking for ways to, to hold men accountable. And look, I agree we should hold men accountable. Men will always be more accountable than women because accountability is a leadership trait. Men are meant to lead, so men are meant to be accountable. I don't want to get away from that. I'm, I'm a man, and I just I perceive myself I will always be more accountable than women. But in this situation, it's, it's pretty silly. To just, oh, it's the men's fault. Eh, not really. Let's, let's relax on that. But it's interesting how when women make a poor decision, we find a way to blame it on the men. But when men bl make a poor decision, we blame it on, we blame it on them. So um, interesting analogy with the drug dealers. But at the end of the day, it comes with choice. But like you said, you would ban it. There's Banning is a slippery slope. You know this on your social media accounts. You know this, that you don't want to be banned. So why can you ban speech but not ban activities or ban what people want to do with it. We, we saw what happened with prohibition, mm -hmm. tried to ban it. It was reckless, okay? You try to ban mm -hmm. um, people making decisions with their own bodily autonomy, people will react to it. Well, how could you ban something that the market wants? How would well, I mean, prostitution isn't legal. We do draw lines at some point that work well i mean people are still gonna do it illegally of course but i don't really want to live in a world like amsterdam where you can go down the street and get a hooker 
And that's really like, you know, have you seen that where the women are like in the front? I've been to the red light district. It, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and so it's like, do you really want to be in a society that is so accepting that we accept that? I, I would argue, no, I don't think the argument should be, well, someone's going to buy it. We should just make it legal. I, I don't really. But there's it. levels to that. And I, you, ha you have a point. I yeah. get it because, you know, there, there is some validity there. But you're also saying that there's some sort of equivalency to uh, a crackhead <laughs> to a dude who wants to go to a strip club. I would say that there's nuance to this. There are sex addicts. There are porn addicts, and there's some guys oh, that just kind of want to have a fun well, night on would, a Saturday night. I would, I just like with drugs, well, there's crack addicts and some guys that want to smoke a joint. We, I'll tell you what we could yeah. make an equivalency to the the one out of three very very lonely men in this country. A lot of these men still do jobs that run the infrastructure mm -hmm. in society. I mean, you heard Andrew Tate talk about when he did the cam business. Uh, men would send their life savings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't think that's a a, a form of addiction? A form of loneliness, like we can't have empathy yeah, for that. Yeah, but whose fault is that? It, 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 everyone's choices in life is their own fault. But my point is when we were talking about the sex workers, you mm -hmm. immediately blame the customers. And whenever women make a bad decision, we have a tendency to blame the men. That was I, my I, point. I'm not even blaming. Yeah. I'm just saying that it's a free market. But, so as example, those one third. Well, <laughs> I mean, he did blame the men <laughs> in the beginning. I'm pretty sure you might be able to replay that. And it's literally what he said. Uh, but. Anyway, the men we've seen that stat. Mm -hmm. One third of men are virgins. Yeah. I ask myself, well, why are they virgins? Mm -hmm. All right, maybe they're young. Maybe they have no game. Maybe they don't have any respect from women because they don't deserve respect. They're broke. They're fat. They're sloppy. They're losers. They play video games. They have no game. They have no skill set. You know what, homie, Hector? Mm -hmm. Maybe you should be a virgin <laughs> until you improve your life. Mm -hmm. So, I, but that's I, a small percentage of men. That's like if you break down the numbers, that's not the majority. I mean, overweight, sure, but everyone's fat. You know, that's not like a men yeah. or women thing. <laughs> but, but, but 40, I don't feel bad again, for those but guys. But again, but again, uh, you 45, feel bad for those guys. I, I, who I feel bad for is the I'll, I, there's two groups of men that I have a lot of empathy for. Yeah. One is the average men that do not get respect in this country. Again, 45% of men, almost one out of two men, do a job that makes the country run. And a lot of times, especially in the influencer space, I, I see this a ton, where we shit on the average men that make this country run. None of mm -hmm. us could do what we do without them. The second empathy, the, the, the second group of men that I have a lot of empathy for are the traditional men that do the right thing and get married and they typically have average jobs work the same job for 20 years and then come home one day to a woman that has taken half of their assets and i've been on the other side of that and i've interviewed mm -hmm. these guys i have a ton of empathy for them because they have no idea what they are signing up for yeah no the men definitely need to be forewarned of sort of the uh mm. pitfalls of marriage but I'll say this, I'm almost taking like a different angle to do, because, but I am a man, I, I, I yeah. consult with <laughs> men, I coach men, I, I, I'm one of those dudes that actually want men and women mm -hmm. to win. I'm not that person that's like, men win, women lose, mm -hmm. women win, men lose. No, but I when, think we when, can all win. But when Come men, on, hear me out. Mm -hmm. Those men, from a macro standpoint, from an economic standpoint, you're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. the, the millions of truck drivers, mm -hmm. okay, the millions of guys that work with their hands, the millions of plumbers, from a macro standpoint, you're absolutely right. But from a micro standpoint, are you basically saying that I have to respect Carl, the truck driver, just because he drives a truck? What else is he doing with his life? Is he a good person? Is he, is he contributing to society? Is he raising his kids? Mm -hmm. Is he actually active in his community? <laughs> This is weird. This is a weird take. Is he uh, practicing philanthropy? I, I think but it's just because he drives a truck, I don't think he deserves respect. I, I think from a macro standpoint, I respect what... I disagree. I disagree. Because, you know, we do need people like that to, to keep the world going. You have to respect that. You have to respect people who show up every day and, and get the job done. You got to respect the people who keep the infrastructure going. You absolutely have to respect them. You know, it's not like those guys are taking the easy way out. That In no way is that the easy way out. It's, it's not an easy thing to do to show up every day and work in general. So I, I do disagree with him on this, that I, I do think your average man, honestly, probably deserves more respect than the YouTubers, the influencers. I mean, absolutely deserves more respect. They, they literally keep things going. The men do 
but I don't think I ever need to spec Carl because he drives eight hours in a truck every day. So it's well, very nuanced. I, I think it's like a pretty Ugh. privileged position to be in, honestly, because he like the average men allow you to do what you do and live how you live. So I, I think That's you should right. treat the people yeah. that help you get to where you are with a lot of respect. Yes. Okay. Simply uh, for having those jobs. Just because they think, have a I job, think, they I deserve think, respect? I, I think that you should respect... The, <laughs> I'll give you an example, well, Uber yeah, drivers. Yeah. I couldn't get anywhere without my Uber drives. It's a normal job, right? It doesn't, you know, it's not like a necessarily hard job to do. But yes, I think the average men in this country that work normal nine to fives deserve respect. Absolutely. So, you know, Elon Musk has a quote that you are paid in the proportion to the problem that you solve. You get paid by delivering value. Yeah. So as an example, I work, no, I'm not doing this, in the financial markets, mm -hmm. okay? I'm a financial wholesaler for a very niche product, and I'm, my company, myself, are the best in the world at this one thing called life settlement. So I, I hear what he's saying, and perhaps I'm just going to be pointing out the exceptions here, and maybe that what he said is in general true, but it, it, it may not, though, because you talk about firefighters, right? If you're stuck in a burning building and you have a firefighter come in and he literally saves your life, that's the most value anybody could ever provide you. But he's getting paid at at minimum, you know, maybe under under six figures, maybe a little bit more than six figures or even police officers. You know, these these average jobs, they absolutely provide a lot of value and they're not necessarily being paid that much. So, you know, honestly, I'm really not sure if if that is true, that your income is directly linked to the amount of value you bring. Because if you really think about it and you really think about the jobs that do keep things going, police, firefighter, construction workers, I mean, the list goes on and on. But the, the, the main two that I can think of right now that provide enormous value, perhaps the most value you could ever provide someone, which would be saving their life, their, their income doesn't necessarily reflect that. Now, maybe that's the exception that I'm pointing out here and it doesn't break the general rule, but that's something I'll have to think about more. We are the best of the best of the best, and we are highly compensated for it. That's how I made my money. That's how I met PBD in the financial world. But very few people can do it, and that's why we're paid a lot. But anybody mm -hmm. can drive Uber. Uber. Mm -hmm. Anyone. I think it would be safer to say what he just said, the very few people who can do it. If there's a small amount of people who can do it, then, yeah, that would make sense that they, get, would, that they would get paid more. Can clean a studio, be a janitor. So the lower level of a job, the less problems you're solving, mm -hmm. the less you'll be paid. So, you know, n how many YouTubers are out there? Okay, there's tens of millions. Mm -hmm. How many YouTubers have more than a- Yeah, but that's the thing. YouTubers aren't necessarily solving problems, but they're getting paid a lot. So, I mean, some of them are. So, I mean, it, it is kind of a weird, blanket statements he's making here but I, I see what he's saying but i just don't know if it's true Hundred thousand subs two percent mm -hmm. how many have more than a million subs like pearl mm -hmm. less than one percent so it'd be like saying just because you're a youtuber you deserve respect mm -hmm. it's like no respect is earned not given it's mm -hmm. you need to establish some credibility and competence in order to get that but respect. I, I think so if you I, own the trucking company, it's like, all right, that guy built the company and hired all the guys respect. So then but should, the guy on his first day of a job just because he drives so a truck, I'm not like, oh my God, okay, respect. Okay, so do you, do you not respect the employees that work for you unless they work their way up and own the company? I respect the hell out of them. But that's the point. Like, yeah. like I, I think that you should respect the people <laughs> that allow you to do all what right. you do. And so, yeah. so you have it that's here, right. and I'm also talking about in society as well. So, you know, the Uber drivers allow you to mm -hmm. get from point a to point b i so, yes i think they deserve we're, a, yeah. we're, we're saying the same thing yeah. these guys are resec we just have a different so you ever given an uber driver a five star yeah all the time right yeah you ever given an uber driver a one star no never no how about a two star never how about a four star <laughs> i always just click five okay so <laughs> i'll tell you how often do you uber all the time i uber everywhere i don't even have a car i haven't had a car in 10 years bro. Yeah, I don't perfect even. let me tell you something Nine out of ten trips, yeah. they're getting a five star. Yeah. You picked me up, you were there on time, you took me to where I was going, cool, awesome, great job, respect. But every one in ten trips, someone's getting a three star. Someone's getting a one motherfucking star. Why? 
their car smelled, they took the wrong route, they were rude. There's a million different reasons, but the point is, I'll respect you. If you do a good job and do the job you're supposed to do, five star, homie. Mm-hmm. All right, great job, Pedro. But, you're but if you don't do a good job, sorry, Rick, you just got one star. Well, so the, the whole, like, I'm just going to respect you because mm-hmm. you're an Uber driver. The, at what point does merit and value come into the equation? See, now you're kind of switching it. You're, like, adding something in where you're like, well, what about the ones that don't do a good job? No. Correct. And, Yes, we know there are exceptions, Adam. Well, but you've my, never given a one my, star. My, but my point, well, I mean, I probably would, but you I should. just, I just, I'm, I'm pretty easy to please. It's like you get me to point A to point B, I'm, I'm happy.